What's up everybody? This is a force of nature, spiritual awakening, and today we will be discussing Saturn and the 8th house in a composite chart or a Davidson chart. So this is for anybody that has this with somebody that they're in a relationship with or somebody that they're just cool with. This can also be um for um your mother, your sister, your brother, your friends. Okay? Um just please keep in mind that when we're doing these kind of charts, um, this is more so about the intimate, okay? Intimate connections and intimate relationships like partnerships, okay? But you can also get some information out of this, okay? When it does um, show up, like if you're brothers and sisters, okay? If you are um, relatives in general, cousins and things like that, okay? So Saturn in the eighth house in the composite or Davidson chart as well. This would also apply to if you had Saturn in Scorpio, because it will give it a Saturn in Scorpio vibe in the composite or Davidson chart. Okay. Um, now, what is the difference between this? Uh, Saturn in Scorpio, Saturn in the eighth house. Saturn in Scorpio will be the way that you're showing up. The house placement is the area that you're going into together. Okay, if that makes any kind of sense. Okay, so if you know Saturn is naturally linked to Capricorn. Okay, and let's say you have Saturn in Libra. Okay, you're showing up in a Saturn in Libra way. You're showing up in a Capricorn way. Okay, in a Capricorn's um, uh, arena as a Libra in the eighth house. That's what it would be like, okay? But we're going to jump into this. So... This is a feeling that each person in the relationship is responsible for the other person's emotional fulfillment. Um, emotional fulfillment is going to be extremely prominent factor when Saturn is in the eighth house of a composite chart or a Davidson chart. So with this placement, there is a deep, almost unconscious belief that both of the individuals involved feel they need each other. And they feel like that they complete each other. So we already know that the eighth house is a tense house. Scorpio is going to be in a tense house. So when we're speaking about this couple coming together, they feel like they are drawn to each other. They're pulled to each other. Um, it can feel like if they were not together, they would be depressed. They would be alone. They would feel regret. They would feel unrequited love, okay? This is what can go on and take place with this particular placement. So if anybody has this with somebody, please let me know. Um, me and my husband have this in the Davison chart, okay? So just let me know. And we are married. So the eighth house represents the death of your individual ego, which you sacrifice in order to merge with another person and become one with them. Okay, so the task here is going to be extremely difficult. Why is it going to be difficult here? Because the very thing that they both want, it seems to be difficult to get a hold of, even being in this relationship. So they will do this on every single level that they can. In this house of intimate relationships, you expect to merge as a couple emotionally, sexually, and financially. Now, let me tell you what can happen in this relationship, this partnership. What can happen is you can definitely be emotional, sexual, and have money. Okay, but one of these areas is going to be lacking. Okay, and what can also happen is periodically, okay, it could fluctuate between this, it could fluctuate between that. Sexual, okay, maybe y'all getting it in all the time, and then all of a sudden, okay, um, the fire is, is dying down. You need to bring more excitement. Okay, maybe the sex is great, it's worth the hook. Okay, but financially, y'all having a rough time. Um, Maybe the sex is great, the money is good, but you can't reach me on an emotional level. You don't know um, or care about what I think and how I feel, see? So this is going to be something. So you share your bodies in sex and bring them together as though they are one. So this is a dynamic and powerful placement to have in a composite chart or a Davidson chart. Your finances merge 
and you own property jointly. So this is the type of placement where you can gain from the connection, where you can gain wealth, you can gain property, you can invest, make investments, okay? Together is the goal, okay? The challenge is it's going to be an obstacle to do it. It's just going to be a damn obstacle. And we're going to get into why. So you also merge emotionally and rely on each other for full emotional support. So they are looking to each other for a strong support system. They both want to support each other. They both want to care for each other, be there for each other. Sometimes they're going to clash. They're going to have clashes. Okay, why are they going to have clashes? Because this is a karmic placement. They have a lot of karmic issues that went on and took place, and we're going to touch on that. So this is a quite, this is quite a large undertaking. And with the serious planet of Saturn in the eighth house, it can feel like a huge responsibility. So being in this relationship, you could feel like your partner is a burden, you could feel like you, you have to do certain things. You have to sacrifice certain things just to make ends meet, just to make the other person um, happy, just to make sure that they're good, that they're okay, just to make sure they have a smile on their damn face, okay? And then what happens in the um, end is one or both people start feeling like um, you don't appreciate me, okay? You don't care about what I have done, what I do for you, and things like that. All of these things could go on and take place. It's ridiculous. Um, it can be too much for some people and the heaviness of the relationship can make it feel like a restrictive burden however if you can enjoy the reliable and solid feeling Saturn brings it makes you both dependable and willing to sacrifice a great deal for each other so they are up for the sacrifice they're not worried about making these sacrifices. What ends up happening is because they make these sacrifices, over a course of time, they start feeling like they're being restricted in certain particular areas, okay? And let's say maybe it's sex being restricted, okay? Maybe one person's not up for the damn task because they're working all the time or they're tired all the damn time because they worked all the damn time. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of shit that goes on with this. Um, but over... Sometimes it can feel like it's a burden, okay? Like it's a lot of weight on your shoulders, a lot of pressure going on and taking place. So in this relationship, you can have problems with getting close with each other. Sexually or spiritually. Or this can be sexually and spiritually. Or it could ping pong between sexually and spiritually. Like maybe one time it was, for a period of time it was sexually and then another time, okay, it's not sexually, it's spiritually. Oh, this is crazy. So the couple may find it hard to open up to each other completely on a very, very deep level. So the very thing that they're seeking out, the very thing that they want to do, they can find it hard to do it. Okay, so this could be when one person is opening up, having deep, rooted conversations the other person doesn't want to talk about deep shit maybe they just want to laugh joke and have their drinks and have a good damn time tonight instead of talking about all the shit that has happened in your life okay when they already know that story um but the other person wants to get down to the root where the other person may be a little reluctant to open up or maybe one person is opening up and the other person is listening okay and now the other person is putting their input into um, their views and things like that into what has happened okay and now the other person that started the damn conversation has a damn problem with what the hell you damn talking about okay they don't like what you said they, they don't think it was that now y'all two start arguing which now is going to make the person feel like they're being restricted to have conversations restricted to speak up and all different types of things they don't know if they should say things but what this actually is Okay, this is a karmic relationship. This position is a karmic relationship, and it also has to deal with karmic issues coming from a past life, dealing with control and wanting to dominate the other person. So in the past life, these two really were bumping heads, okay? Um, they could have been together in a relationship, and they probably just didn't see eye to eye one person wanted to control them one person was obsessed okay jealous um, possessive all of these different types of things 
Because both people can become obsessed with each other, wanting each other to be around or even controlling in this lifetime. Okay, you ever seen them couples, um, every time you go somewhere, it's the other one right next to them, okay, or they're always together, you know, they buddies and things like that, they're always together, but just because they're always together doesn't mean they don't get into arguments, it doesn't mean that they don't fight and bicker, it doesn't mean those things, okay, they could just be cool and friends, friends argue, okay, but this is what could go on and take place. So this can also be a karmic linkage that is brought over about separation issues. See how we have control, dominating issues, being obsessed, okay, controlling issues, all of these different types of things. And then we have separation issues. So in the past life, these could be the type of people that were in a relationship. Okay, and they were going back and forth, arguing back and forth, okay? And maybe one person said, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm not going to continue this relationship anymore, okay, and walks away from the relationship. That's a form of separation. Another form of separation could easily be somebody passed away, okay? And now in this lifetime, um, you just want to hold on to every damn moment, every moment with this person. You want to wake up to them. You want to sleep with them. You know, you want to go out with them. When you go out with your friends, you want to bring them with you. You know, all of this stuff happens and it's coming from a past life of fearing, of absolutely fearing losing the person again. Okay. And this could also be losing a person due to your controlling issues. You see what I'm saying? Nobody want to keep on um, going back and forth with you. Or maybe it can become aggressive. Okay? Maybe that person in the past life was very aggressive. And maybe in this life, all you're doing is just running your damn mouth. And you're not putting your hands on the person. Okay? So maybe in the past life, it was physical abuse. In this life, it could be mental abuse. Um, or it could just be just an obsessive nature. Okay? Wanting to be the leader. Wanting to be in control, wanting to be in command, wanting to provide, okay? Wanting your other partner to follow you, okay? And I mean, you're the leader and you want them to follow, okay? Um, This is different, okay? In my personal experience, I'm definitely, me and my husband, we have this, okay? And he always speaks about um, being a provider. You know, I'm the man, I, I'm being a provider, I'm a leader, okay, and, and I, I lead and all this other shit like I'm supposed to follow. Okay, at the end of the day, this is the thing. I'm, I'm never following any fucking damn thing, period. Okay, I'm not following you. I am your partner. We are a team. There is no I in team. Okay, so either I'm your teammate or um, I'm not none of that shit, period. So that's something that can play on um, in this connection. So now what the couple actually does is they hold on to each other tight as hell to dear life. Being together comes with a course and heavy baggage on one of both people. Okay, so being in this kind of connection, um, it can be peaceful, it can be blissful. Okay, um, both people do feel like they are meant to be. They do feel like they complete each other, but it comes with some kind of course. Okay, and heavy baggage and heavy burdens that they have to carry. So this is an indication of a very strong bond being presented to the table. This placement usually and often shows up in couples who have come together after a death of a spouse or a long-term relationship or a marriage has come to an end of no return. Okay, so all of these things could have went on and took place. Um, we could have got together and um, your partner passed away, the other person's partner passed away. But this could easily be you broke up with your partner. They broke up with their partner. They're not with them no more. They don't even feel in their mind that they can even deal with them the way that they used to any longer. That is a relationship coming to no return. So there seems to be an inherent understanding of loss between the both of them. Okay. They both share this link. And this is the thing that is pulling them together. Okay. Because they were in serious committed relationships with somebody else. That shit didn't work in this life. And then now they link up. Okay. And they don't want to, um, fuck shit up again or whatever it is. They want it to go, um, great smoothly. Okay. So this can create either a fear of this happening again or an understanding of the flighting nature of life. Saturn here axes 
that the couple dives as deep as they can, regardless of their fears. Okay? So Saturn will also ask the couple to let go of restrictive ideas about sexuality and be open to expression of fantasy within a safe and grounded context. If one or both comes to a relationship with sexual dysfunction, this Saturn placement can offer the greatest level of healing once trust is established, okay? So these people need to learn how to be open with each other, honest with each other, get past these past life karmic issues of um, control, um, feeling the need to want to dominate the other person, having the need to want to control the other person, being obsessive and possessive and jealous, okay? Overcome that because all of this is from the past life just being pushed over into this life you see what i'm saying um having that fear of loss again is something that needs to not be feared okay but spending time just do it okay having a great time just do it being open and honest just do it feeling vulnerable just do it having sex freely and, and, and being able to express yourself sexually with one another do it freely okay don't feel like you have to stop and pause yourself and you know should i do this shouldn't i do this is this the right time you know all of that shit needs to go out the window period okay so I'm going to leave this one in this one for now. And in future videos to come, I will go more into depth into Saturn in the 8th house, composite chart, and Davidson chart. So if anybody needs their chart to be analyzed, please hit me up. If anybody wants to um, donate to the channel, please feel free. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a couple of sales going on. The Cosmic Sale is on. The Raffle Sale is also on. 555 Raffle Sale. Um, my phone number is 516-738-6042. If anybody wants to hit me up about that. Okay, because that Raffle Sale is about to be over. Okay, it's going to be over November 19th. And the Raffle is only $5. Okay, for a chance to win two readings. Okay, so that's a good damn deal. Okay, you can buy as many raffles as you want. If you want to buy um, three raffles, that's $15. Okay, I'm going to put your name in the hat three different times. Okay, so it's up to you. But um, I just want to let everybody know I do appreciate each and every one of you. I see everybody liking and subscribing. More subscribers, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so yeah, this is a force of nature, spiritual awakening, love is love, peace and blessings to you all, and I will see you on the next one.